Guilty Gear. Exile. Story. Welcome to Zep. Thank you, Mr. President. This is... No need for introductions. It's good to see you, Sol. Hmm. Leo has briefed me on the situation. Only a few members of my inner circle have been told of your arrival. Under better circumstances, I would have liked to give you the proper royal treatment. But unfortunately, that is a luxury we cannot currently afford. The gesture is nonetheless appreciated. Now to business. I actually have another guest. He arrived shortly before you, and I think you may find him interesting. What? He's been waiting. Apparently, he has a message for you. I believe it pertains to the subject you came here to discuss. Regardless, he is no ordinary guest. And with your permission, I would like to be present for your conversation. Of course. Your Majesty. Zato One? No. This is... I thought you were dead! I was for a time. Now I have returned. To the machinations of the Conclave. Figures. As a result, I possess information that is very valuable to them. Their objective. Well, there you have it. Zato was revived by the Conclave and knows the details of this cradle incident. He has been waiting here so that he could relay that information to you. Do all your men have their heads up their asses, or is it just these ones? What? If they knew who he was, why in the hell did they let him in? We were, of course, aware of his identity, but decided to let him in anyway. While we're on the subject, however, I think your presence is much more questionable. We only granted an audience to the king and his servants. That's not my problem. So... Can you prove you're not working for the Conclave? No, I cannot. Might I point out, however, that we do not know when their plan will be complete. Perhaps your questions for me can wait. We have confirmed that the Conclave has been researching the art of resurrection for some time. But we do not know why they chose Zato One. So, please, let's just hear them out. I would like to avoid confusion, so allow me to be frank. The Conclave controls the Cradle, which they intend to use to conquer the world. And inside of the Cradle... ...is Justice, the God of Destruction. Huh? You mean, THE Justice? You don't look especially surprised. Perhaps you do not need further explanation? No, I think we do. You can't just tell us justice is in that thing and then stop. Is the Conclave attempting to start another crusade? A reasonable question. Why would the Conclave, who control nearly the entire world, albeit covertly, resort to using justice for further conquest? 
exactly? The answer is rather simple. The world they wish to create cannot exist in one that allows free thought. I don't follow. They intend to standardize the entire world. A what? Culture will be unable to advance beyond a certain point. In short, the Conclave wants to restrict all human freedom. To accomplish that, they need Justice's incredible power and omnipresence. This is absurd. You're talking about creating a dystopia. Before we go there, wasn't Justice utterly destroyed? Yes, Justice was destroyed. Or, I suppose you could say, died. Soul Bad Guy knows that much better than any of us. That's why they needed the Art of Resurrection. You just happen to be their guinea pig. Precisely. The resurrection you are thinking of is perhaps slightly different. The true nature of resurrection is not the recreation of soul and flesh. What? It is the art of binding a soul to an object. As you know, I died several years ago. However, I was not the sole owner of my enchanted body. After my death, Eddie's soul inhabited my flesh. Once the Conclave discovered this, it did not take them long to determine it might be possible to bind a soul to a vessel. I was returned to life to test this theory. So, you're suggesting the Conclave is trying to bind a new soul to Justice's body? That is correct. That is the reason they hosted the second night of the Holy Order Selection Tournament. When you destroyed Justice's soul, you left nothing but an empty shell behind. That's not possible. The Conclave means to write a new chapter of human history. One that casts them as its gods. Everyone in this room is more than familiar with what Justice is capable of, and the threat she poses. What you are suggesting is frighteningly possible. Hold on. Even if Sato's right, how do the Valentines play in all of this? They're just trying to annihilate humanity, right? Likely they believe Justice's revival will lead to humanity's demise. I have no way of knowing how far their plans extend, though. No. It's still impossible. Red alert! Damage and fires reported in West D Sector! Give me a full report. We appear to be under attack, sir. Not from the outside. The enemy is already inside! They appear to be moving through the ship, destroying everything in their path. They, they disappeared, sir. How many are there? Where are they from? They... they're alone! It's a single soldier, sir! Analyzing security footage. We have a hit! The target matches the description of the subject labeled Bedman in our database. He's moving toward the residential block! Our weapons have no effect! We can't stop him! Oh! The hell does he think he is? We will assist you. It would be a damn shame if Zeph was forced to ask for a guest's help to capture a single man. Please, enjoy your tea while I deal with this matter. What are you going to do? Enjoy the hunt. Where is the target currently located? The barracks in Sector C! The Special Task Force is trying to hold him back, but they don't stand a chance. How could our elite soldiers be defeated so easily? Bedman. This must be the child Potemkin mentioned in his report. I have little doubt now that he's working with the Conclave. Is he here hoping to interrupt our meeting with the king? Too little, too late. Hmm? There you are. You've made quite a mess of my home. Tell me, where should I send the invoice for all this damage? The Conclave? Valentine, perhaps? 
Are you too sleepy to talk, young man? That's unfortunate. It's time for you to rise and shine. Yeah! Huh? Oh, your teleportation. I read about it in the report. Very well. I shall no longer rely on my eyes. The attack you're about to witness will pulverize any living creature within eight meters, no matter how fast they move, or how well they guard themselves. I call it... Agni Ken! Impossible! This is the world's first 8th generation reinforced high-density bed frame! How could you stop it with your bare hands? I see. You can dodge a blow from my ultimate punch. No wonder Potemkin couldn't defeat you. Gabriel! That's quite enough. Your time's up. Quite right. I shall take my leave. Did you think I'd let you escape so easily? State your name and age. Who do you work for? Huh. Perhaps the most futile interrogation in all of history. Can you hear me, Leo? Loud and clear. If you're calling me on this line, then I assume you figured out what I was getting at. Yes. Then the Conclave is behind the tragedy of Babylon, after all. Yes. There is no other way to see the facts. All right. Tell me the details. <laughs> What's wrong? My apologies. Our intelligence on this situation has grown exponentially in a very short period. Frankly, I just feel grateful that I can finally tell someone about it. I understand how you must feel, but right now, we need to keep this quiet. Don't let your guard down. Actually, I think it's time we stepped into the light. What do you mean? I'm glad you're in Illyria, Leo. I need someone there I can trust. I don't see where you're going with this. I have a favor to ask you, and it is not an easy one. I need you to release someone to my authority. They may be able to help us fight the Cradle. Well, well, I was planning to sow a little dissent out here and visit you while they were distracted, which, ahem, didn't go quite according to plan. Then again, we're talking alone now, so perhaps I've succeeded after all. You are? It's a pleasure to meet you, again. This is... Inside your dream, I was able to enter it because we're close, physically, I mean. Then again, since I've taken it over, I guess this is my dream now. Who are you? Why don't you call me Bedman? Your mother has asked me to run a few errands. Mother? No one told me anything. 
Of course not. I'm what you might call your superior. I'm overseeing this entire operation, so naturally I know everything, even how it ends. Mother would never trust one of them. <laughs> oh, I'm special. You can't be. Redundancies are just redundant. You don't exactly have an open mind, do you? If you ask me, you're a lot closer to being redundant than I'll ever be. I suppose that doesn't really matter now, though. In the end, you were just a tool in the operation, and ultimately disposable. Yes, I am a tool. Mother only loves useful tools. Love? That doesn't sound like the right word for you. I know, but Mother doesn't need anyone who won't do what they're supposed to do. Then let me ask, why didn't you self-destruct? Hmm? Judging from what I've seen here, you undoubtedly had ample opportunities. Your role is finished, isn't it? L is restricting my powers. L? Oh, right, right, your little sister. Interesting. So you can restrict each other's power. Goodness, that's convenient and annoying. You know about L. Does that mean you're really one of Mother's allies? Hmm, now you've put me in a tough spot. I'm here because you need to be, uh, taken care of. Is that Mother's desire? It is. You know what the Cradle is up to, and if that information falls into enemy hands, all my careful calculations will be worth approximately jack shit. There's no need to worry. I won't talk. You can trust me. Trust? <laughs> I'm afraid you're using that one wrong, too. You see, trust is something friends have for each other. Friends? Yes, you see, in a group of friends, every person is unique, like me. You, on the other hand, are just a copy of something else, a tool. There's nothing to set you apart. So, I... need something to set me apart? Hmm. Tools only need perform their function at the correct time. Mother said so. Perhaps your comprehensive faculties are a little underdeveloped. I'm not unique? Is it impossible to be unique without emotions? What the hell am I doing? Never mind, I apologize, but this conversation is over. This is Mother's will, remember that. All right then. Take care of me. But I have one last request. What is it? Can I take the dog with me? <sighs> you! What the hell happened to you here? Now you really are just like a human. You have emotions. How did this... How can you ask me to kill this little girl? Someone's coming. Time for me to hide. I'm back. What? Oh, were you asleep? Sorry about that. Sin. Yeah? Why do you keep coming here? Come on, don't make me repeat myself. To make you laugh, obviously. Why? Making me laugh will not benefit you. It's not really about benefits. Just like, I want to see you laugh. I'm a tool. I only have value when I carry out the tasks I was assigned. That's why I can't understand these feelings that drive you to take apparently meaningless actions. If they benefit no one, why do them? Wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty deep question. Are you asking me to explain every action I take? I need to know what the right thing to do is. If I don't know that, then I can't take the correct action, and taking an incorrect action is pointless. Oh, come on. What does right even mean anyway? Let's say Kai and the old man think something tastes bad, but I like it. Does that make me wrong? In a way, everybody's right, see? They're right that it tastes bad, and I'm right that it tastes good. I don't understand your example. Uh, 
How do I say this? Oh, got it. Do you believe in God? God? I acknowledge the concept exists and people find value in it, but without further evidence, I can't authoritatively state- No, I'm asking how you feel about it. Remember when you ate that hamburger? You had an opinion on it. Your opinion. Like that. I... I don't know. You're impossible. All right, let's try something else. Look out that window. <laughs> this is the real reason I'm here. Doesn't that look pretty? I don't know. I think you just don't have the words to describe how you feel. See, I think it's super pretty. Um... To me, that's enough. The way I feel, the way this looks, I don't want somebody trying to explain that to me with big words or fancy ideas. I just like the explanation, this sky looks beautiful because God made it that way. So, to me, that would be a good reason for God to exist. Do you think that's the right answer? That's just what you want. It doesn't make anything real. Maybe, but I don't think everything needs to be black and white. You don't need to shove yourself into a corner and tell yourself you have to be something. But if I don't, I won't be a good tool. You're wrong, Ramlethal. You're not a tool. Wrong. <laughs> you bastard! When did you... Wait. Bedman's only here for me. I asked if I could take the dog with me. That's why he killed it. He won't hurt you. What are you talking about? Stay back! I'm sorry about the dog, but I thought this would be the easiest way for her to understand. I see you're beginning to develop emotions, so I'm going to teach you the meaning of replacement. What? There are 682 known dog or Canis lupus familiaris breeds, and in Illyria alone there are over 31 million dogs. We could create a mage hound exactly like this one. It is, in other words, replaceable. No. No, this isn't it. Why? It's the same dog, but something's different. Exactly. This is a replacement. You liked the last dog, but not this one, you see? Everything is... unique? Am... Am I unique, too? Ram! Explain why you failed to dispose of Ramlethal. How about you explain to me what the hell you were thinking? You know I won't lay a finger on a young woman. Why did you give them emotions? This is horribly miscast. It's all your fault. Or if this is your not-so-subtle way of telling me I'm no longer needed, fine. Enjoy the rest of this show on your own. Very well. I admit I was wrong. Now please, calm down. I need you to create our absolute world. I apologize for my outburst. 
Considering how the chips have fallen, however, we should prepare ourselves for an eventuality in which the Cradle's destination is discovered. Yes. Do you have any way to halt their progress? I haven't been doing this for fun, you know. I'll make sure that the absolute world comes to be, even if it costs me my life. Good. Carry on, then. Please, wait! We cannot open these doors without the Conclave's approval. I think we can. I have a key. That's not what I... Corp... Sir? I am one of the kings of Illyria, am I not? Yes, sir. Which makes me very important. Uh, of course, sir. Glad we've cleared that up. Now shut up and stand aside. B but, sir... A wise decision, Second King Leo Whitefang. You are far more capable a human being than I initially suspected. Hey, enough chit-chat. I'm here to introduce the man who's going to get us out of this. Dr. Paradigm. Explain yourself, Leo. Dr. Paradigm is one of the heroes who saved us from extinction during the Baptisma 13 incident. He appears to be a gear. Do you mean to tell me this is the collaborator Kai mentioned during the UN conference? That is correct, Mr. President. I'll explain the details later. I'm afraid we don't have much time. R right. Right now, our top priority is to locate the cradle and destroy it. To do that, we need the good doctor's assistance. The assistance of this bird? I am a dragon, sir, not a bird. As this is a state of emergency, I will let your insult pass, but I hope I will not hear you make the same mistake in the future. Paradigm's knowledge and throughput exceeds that of our entire operations department. I suggest you listen to what he has to say. Oh, all right. I see you're all here. Good. Now please pay close attention. I assume you have all seen King Kai's report regarding the Cradle. Specifically, you know that the Conclave is behind it. They are working in concert with the Valentines, and we believe that their objective is to unleash Justice, who is within the Cradle. I still can't believe the Conclave would do this. Yes, there is much cause for concern. But first we must investigate where the Cradle appears, and how we can destroy it. And, uh, and you know the answer to this. Just hear him out. The first incident occurred around noon on the 28th, when the Cradle appeared above Babylon. All living organisms in the city were obliterated, but inanimate objects were left unharmed. Then the cradle disappeared. Right. Then, at approximately 20 hundred hours on the next day, the cradle reappeared near the Black Sea. Major Lyle's forces engaged it, but were defeated. There are several important facts here. First, where did the Cradle disappear to? Second, why was only living matter affected? Third, how is it possible that some members of Major Lyle's unit survived? Hmm. If we examine this information, we can see that the Cradle is not only a vessel for justice, but also for the Conclave. Now just wait a minute there, Doctor. You're suggesting the Cradle is... is some kind of 
A ship for the Conclave? That wasn't in the report. We know that there are living organisms inside of the Cradle. My hunch is that they are human. Every nation on Earth is currently analyzing the data we have. But so far, I've seen nothing to corroborate your argument. That's because your probes are only designed to detect life, and your analysis tools are not designed for this sort of data. Filter out the noise, and you'll see signals that indicate life, even if you can't spot the occupants themselves. Even so, that's not enough to draw a conclusion. I was going to address this later, but since you've asked, perhaps I can adjust my presentation. Please. The core issue here is how the Cradle attacked Babylon. As I considered it, I began to suspect that it was not an attack at all, but rather a mode of transportation. I'm sorry, but... Could you please elaborate on that? Very well. First, it was initially theorized that the Cradle disappeared in order to avoid pursuit. But that makes us ask, was that in fact teleportation? W what else would it be? True teleportation would require the object to reappear elsewhere almost immediately. But the Cradle was gone for nearly 32 hours. Moreover, there is no known process which can teleport such a large object. Then where the hell did it go? The backyard. It really exists then? I do not blame you for doubting its existence, but I can assure you it does. I have in fact entered the backyard. I thought the backyard was just a theory, an academic exercise. Why would the cradle go there? The answer to that is simple. Even with the doctor's knowledge, it would be nearly impossible for us to enter the backyard. I see. That said, travel to the backyard is actually quite simple, at least theoretically. First, one must exchange a portion of the real world with a corresponding area inside the backyard. Then place the cradle within the borrowed portion of the backyard. And finally, simply return both areas to their original worlds. The sphere we saw that appeared to be an attack was in fact the rapid expansion of backyard space into our own realm. That doesn't explain the disappearance of all the residents of Babylon. This brings us to my second point. Are you aware of what happens to a normal life form when it enters the backyard? Oh, no. Oh, yes. They turn to dust. The backyard is composed of high-density information. It governs all of creation. Any normal creature is immediately crushed by that wealth of data. That said, it has no effect on any non-living matter. Which is why only living creatures in Babylon were affected. That is why I believe said sphere was an intrusion of the backyard into our realm. Now on to my third point. Major Lyle's unit was initially assumed to have been utterly destroyed, but in fact, proved to have survivors. The Opus anti-Valentine units that had been deployed for the attack also survived the Sphere. According to the testimonies of the survivors, they were touched by the Sphere, but able to escape it. We did a little research and discovered that every single one of them had something in common. Well, what was it? Every one of them fought alongside Kai Kisk during the Baptisma 13 incident. When the first generation Valentine attacked Illyria, all our defenses were useless against her. Why? Because their divine steps and their magic were too foreign. They belonged only to those who dwelt in the backyard. 
The High King was able to grasp this and eventually lead his men to victory. To protect them, soldiers under his immediate command were given a unique blessing. And it worked? Quite well. That the Opus are also under this blessing? We suspect that to be the case. Hmm? Oh, uh, not exactly. We've done a little research on our own, and the Opus are mostly gears. What? What the? We gears also fought against Valentine and were able to resist her power even without a special blessing. No doubt the Sanctus Populi noticed this. But, but research on gear cells has been banned by the UN. This is an enormous problem. Mr. President, please, this is a serious issue and something we must carefully investigate, but for now, perhaps we should keep it a secret. Perhaps you should both calm down. The Opus have been dispatched across the world to help. I doubt we'll feel much scrutiny immediately. Even so! I think this means I'll have to bump. It's not you, it's me. Down to number two on my list of things I wish I hadn't heard. I'm afraid that sort of thing is beyond my expertise. You will need to figure out the details among yourselves once we've overcome this crisis. <sighs> we've gotten a bit sidetracked, but I believe we can state that the mode of transport for the Cradle caused the casualties at Babylon. Returning to my original point, if it is true that people can board the Cradle, then this hypothesis seems even more likely. Tell us everything you know. As I've explained, subjects that have been properly prepared can survive in the backyard for a period of time. But it is akin to, for example, space or the deep ocean. You could survive for a time, but not indefinitely. Eventually, everyone must come back for a breath. I get it. That's why the cradle reappeared. It all makes sense. Well done. This is the gear King Kai told us wished to coexist. I fear I may have criticized him prematurely, without seeing the whole picture. Don't be too hard on yourself. I did the same thing. What do we do now? Hmm? As long as the cradle is in the backyard, we're at a loss. That is not necessarily true. Do you recall King Leo's words when we began? Our end game is the destruction of the Cradle. Therefore, we must change the way in which we approach this problem. They have removed our avenues of attack because they fear an attack. Now is the time for us to turn the table. Unfortunately, with our current weapons and lack of time, we cannot touch the cradle once it begins to move, uh, when it begins to enter the backyard. Therefore, we must assume that the next time it comes up for air will be our last chance to strike. With that in mind, allow me to lay out our operation. We have narrowed down the next location where the cradle is likely to surface, as well as when. We will surround this point with elite teams from every nation. The moment it surfaces, we tighten the circle and launch the attack. Our goal is to destroy Justice, who is within the Cradle. Amazing, Doctor. After two defeats, morale was at an all-time low. But your insight has given us new hope. <laughs> you flatter me. My ability to rally your men was only possible because you have encouraged acceptance of other species. Damn. Well, I'll be sure to double my support for coexistence at the next UN hearing. <laughs> yeah. We don't have much time, though. If Kai and his team can make it, they'd be a powerful asset. But I don't know if they can get here fast enough. We've no choice. No doubt Ramlethal's diversions took into account the locations of Frederick, the High King, and the Cradle. 
Our biggest problem now is the absolute defense failure. If we can't take that shield down, all of our firepower will be useless. I've already devised a countermeasure for that. They're in for an exciting surprise. <laughs> you seem prepared for everything. In fact, you seem to know an awful lot before I came to release you. How did that happen? Ah, yes. Before you came, I had another visitor who filled me in on all the details. But the room is impregnable. I've got the only key. Perhaps it is impregnable to any normal person, but my visitor is in fact my trump card for the cradle. Though I worry how Frederick will react. Dr. Paradigm, we have a President Vernon on the line. Excellent. We've prepared the old beacons just like you asked. We just need to place them at the coordinates you gave us, correct? Yes. They will be placed at 10 kilometer intervals with the projected entrance point at the center. Be sure to deploy them all. We're happy to do everything we can, of course, but are you certain this plan will work? We will make it work. Our projected entrance point has a nice view, but there are no landmarks to speak of. Additionally, we expect it will take approximately 22 minutes for the, uh, special delivery to arrive. We cannot sit and wait for the Cradle to appear. Understood. We're requesting all nations relinquish their airspace to us. They aren't pleased, but once Zepp is in position, we should be ready. Excellent, thank you. D Doctor, just what are you planning? Stupid bird must be out of his goddamn mind. Are you really gonna do this? This job's got my name all over it, and hell, it could be worse. Just chase my ass that he's not telling us what his trump card is. This is what you'll be taking tomorrow, sir. Right. Might as well enjoy my trip through the sky, I guess. Who dares to enter the mayhem? Duo. 
Duel 2. All or nothing. Counter. This is all me. Counter. And the power. Damn it. Counter. Come on. Counter. Damn it. I don't give a shit how old you are. Maybe think before you pick a fight next time. Who dares to the man? Me. Me. Edinburgh, Edinburgh Magic Pokemon. Soul versus May. Get ready to run. Heaven or hell. Duel. Duel. One. One. Let's, Let's rock. rock. Counter. Volcanic fighter. I don't give a shit how old you are. Maybe think before you pick a fight next time. Who dares to enter the mayhem? Zapto 1. 
Draconica Fall. Chip, Chip versus, versus Zato. Zato. Get ready to rock. Heaven or Hell. Duel. Duel. One. One. Let's, Let's rock. rock. Come on! Uh. Too late! No. It's short! Too late! Hell. Try and find me! Shit! How is that? Come on! Mirage! Counter! Too late! Kill! Counter! Too late! Kill! Too late! 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 This may hurt. Can keep up? Not enough. Have a nice trip. Have a nice trip. Have a nice trip. Shit, he's my father. I must return what's been given. You need to train harder. Duel. Duel. Two. 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 All or All nothing. Or nothing. Being prepared to fight means being prepared to die. You aren't prepared. That's why you lost. Who dares to enter the main area ring? Let's go. Ta-da! Give me a dollar! That's it! That's it! That's it! 
I admit, I'm hardly in a position to persuade anyone. Melia versus Bow. Get ready to run. Heaven or hell? Duel. One. Let's rock. Well, I must go to counter. Well, the ding ding. Counter. Nope. The ding ding. So strong. Counter. Nailed it! Oh, no, what do we get? There's always time for second chances. I don't have the courage to tell him.